Alright YouTube, you got Mitchell here again. I got a really cool video for you guys today. Uh, it's winter time here. I live in eastern Canada. It's always freezing cold outside is the best way to say that. I think it's minus 22 or, or something relevant to that outside Celsius right now. Um, I got a cool one today. This here is a fire log. You buy these at the stores. This is the cheap one. It's the Compliments brand. But I mean it's just a straight up fire log. It's not one to clean your chimney out or any of that crap. It's just one where you light the corner of each side of the bag, it lights the log up and boom, it's supposed to burn for a while and create heat. Okay, well that's all great and fun. Let's do a way today to create heat for free forever. Okay, this is wood heat we're discussing here. Clearly I got the stove just a rare right now. Uh, I get something always every day and that's junk mail. Always, 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 always junk mail. The every day, you can't open your mailbox without having a bunch of crap in there you don't want. So instead of throwing this in your garbage and then it goes to landfills and all that other stuff, why not turn it into something that's free to you but creates heat for your family which saves you money, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this junk and when you bring it in the house, Set, set aside a little bin or something that you can throw it into. Take it down in the basement. I got a whole bunch of newspaper stuff I stockpile for the stove. And some years I've got so much paper that we've collected over the, the summer. It's, it's just too much. You can throw all that crap in there, okay? This is a great way. You're going to love it. So let's jump right into it and I'm going to show you okay, the first thing you need to do is get buckets, okay? I got three buckets here. That is the correct number for this equation. You're going to need a drill with a drill bit. It don't matter what kind of drill bit you got as long as it's going to poke holes, okay? You're going to take it, drill a bunch of holes. Now I've already pre-done that so I don't have to make a bunch of racket on the camera. I got a whole bunch of holes in the bottom and I've got some holes around the outside edge. Nothing crazy, just some to help the water flow. So that's step number one, is put the holes in the bucket, okay? Step number two, regular bucket nothing about it, you haven't touched it, you haven't done anything to it and you want to take and take bucket number one put it inside bucket number two so now the one that I put holes in is in here and the one that doesn't have holes in it is in the bottom now the idea behind this is that you're going to take all your paper and all your crap that you got and you're going to dump it into the one that has the holes Okay. now you also need water in this that looks like a bill that I should be keeping but uh, you've got to put water in this too, okay? So i got a bucket here that I've already added some paper to and I've got water in it. And I'm just going to pour it into my bucket. Like I said, I already put a bunch of paper in there and it soaked for a little bit. So now we'll give you a shot and show you what we got. We've essentially got the makings for paper mache or pulp. So pulp is, is going to be all ground, you're going to grind this all up, it's going to create pulp or something that's comparable to paper mache and then we're going to turn it into fire logs. But I got another cool fact that we can put in this as well. I have a whole bunch of sawdust. Uh, we cut firewood on the farm, so we always have hordes and hordes and hordes of this stuff. I'm going to add some of that too. So if your hubby's outside and he's been cutting up some wood or something relevant to that, take some and throw it in. If not, the paper works just fine, but this is just me adding a little bit of extra something that's going to make it happy because we all know that this is going to burn and then the paper in there is going to glue it all together like paper mache. So throw a little bit of that in there just to make her happy. Okay, the next, the next step. step. Now this is optional. So this here is the piece you can buy at any hardware store and usually on the bottom of this it has the mixer that you would use for mixing up concrete in buckets, etc. Uh, that'll work just fine for this as long as you let it soak overnight. So if you throw your paper in, give it 24 hours for it to really soak, and then use that, you're good to go. So you don't have to do any kind of Mickey Mousing. But this here, I made this. So this is a small skill saw blade, and I just welded it on the end of the existing one that I cut off. So this is going to turn into my uh, blender, let's call it. <laughs> so that's our next step. Hook this up to the drill, and we're going to get in and do some okay, blending. Okay, next step. So as you can see, we've got our pole attached to our uh, drill. You know, this here now with what I've got going on, if you do this, is fairly dangerous. But if you're handy enough to do something like that, weld the skill saw blade on the back, I think you got that covered. We're going to put this into our bucket and we're going to blend it all up is what we're going to do. And the idea here is to turn the paper and everything into pulp. 
So I'll save you the racket and I'll do it off camera and then I'll come back and show it to you, okay? Here's one of the things to look out for as well. If you start blending it and it's just really, really jumbled up, you gotta remember there's gonna be a small gap at the bottom where water's dropped into because of the holes and the spacing between the buckets. So there is no right or wrong amount of water that you would add to this because we're gonna strain it. So once we get through and we get it all mashed up where we want, we're gonna strain it out to make our brick anyway. So just make sure you've got enough water that works for you. And in fact, I'm just gonna give the whole thing. Why not, right? Saves me from having to take that upstairs and dump it. All right, let's keep going. I'll give you a shot of it. So as you can see, I've essentially turned it into to pulp. So I just wanna keep your, keep your drill against this here, or your bar, it gives you some stability. And you can just hold it there. You don't have to be freaking mashing it all around or nothing. Just like that. You know, you're basically just turning it into a big old blender, but clear as day, you can see, I've made some pretty good pulp there. This is the concept behind making the bricks themselves. This whole procedure has taken me, what, seven minutes now? And you watch what's going to come out of this and how long it's going to blend for. Step. Like I said, this is an easy, easy procedure. Bucket, okay? If you don't have a piece of 2x4 or a 1x6 or something that you can put across the top of this, the idea is we're going to take the bucket now that has the holes in it, okay? We're gonna lift it out and we're gonna set it on top of this bucket so that it can drain a little bit more before we move on to the pressing step. Uh, for me, I don't wanna use a two by six, I wanna use something stable so I'm not screwing around with it. Milk crate, you can find them everywhere and everywhere, especially behind convenience stores. That's where I, I grabbed this bad boy from. But anyway, well, give me two seconds there. She does fit. There you go. So all you're going to do is just put it over top of your bucket. And now we're going to move on to the next one. Okay, so your next step is you're going to lift up on it, okay? So we're pulling it out. We don't want to make a big mess. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to go boom, right over top of my bucket. Now that's why we put our holes in it, right? The reason for the holes was so that it can drain out. Now here's another good point, okay? I've got my other bucket behind it. What should I do with all that soggy water that was in there? Well, let's think about this. This has got weight in it now, right? So the next thing I want to do is, and also, this is another reason why I want to use a milk crate instead of the two by four. I want to take and slowly put this in here. I don't want water shooting out the sides all over the floor, okay? That's not what we're going for at all. But you can see here, we've got our bottom bucket. We've got our milk crate. We've got our bucket with holes and we've got our weight bucket with water, and you can hear it. It's draining. So we're gonna let it do that for a little bit until it's kind of stopped draining on its own, and we're also gonna give it a little bit of a push. So there's no need for us to be here all day long with this, as long as it's not squirting out the sides. That's a big deal. And you can hear the water. Oh, see that? It's her shooting out of the hole right there. That's why we don't want to push too hard. Nice and slow. We also don't want to push the pulp out. And you just keep doing this till it stops dripping. So I'll come back when that's all done. And, and show that's you just to step. give you an idea. So it's, it's done draining right now. And you can see it's like a pulp or paper mache pancake at this point in time. So now we're going to take okay, it out. So you definitely want to move this into a less desirable area in the house. I'm back in the wood room right now on the concrete floor. Uh, because I've taken this out of the other bucket and I've got the holes exposed on the bottom here, right? Last thing I want to do is piss water all over the hardwood. Uh, I've got a knife. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to rim it around the outside. I just want to make sure that when it comes time for me to flip it out, which is what our next step is, we don't want to have to be uh, messing with anything. So just take your knife. You're just going to go around the outside. In fact, let's just show you that so you know what we're doing here. Sorry about the camera work. There we go. Yeah, so I'm just bringing it down the sides. Uh, you don't want to get cut. You don't want it to cut inside. So you don't want to be doing a sawing motion and then you'll end up cutting actually into the, the log here. You just want to take it out, put it in. This way you know you're making fresh cuts and you're getting the side to come apart. And that's that. So I now have the whole thing nice and clean and all uh, ready to go. So the next stage is okay, we're going to pop we go. it out. So we're just going to take our bucket and the idea is just to flip it over 
and get it to pop out. Bam! Whoops. Don't forget about the your strap. You don't want to get hooked underneath. And there it is. So that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is my fire brick. Now here's the deal, okay? Number one, you can cut it now or you can cut it later. So, are you, Sorry, you can cut it now, but you can't cut it later. So if you don't want to have to put the whole brick inside, you're going to want to cut this. So let me just change this so I can see what's going on here. There. So you're going to want to cut it. Otherwise, you're going to have to throw this whole block in like this. And also, by cutting this, it's going to allow it to dry quicker. So we're not looking to tear it all apart, okay? Ooh, I might need to use a serrator. There we go. It's not super easy to cut, okay? So there's certain parts of this where the paper hasn't blended all the way through, right? And you don't want to mangle it. Like I'm trying to keep it all together as one. And I put sawdust in this for me, so it makes it a little bit more rigid. There we go. And I think I got her. Yep. So that's it. Separate it into two. And then we're going to set it aside okay, and let so it dry. Separate it into two. So at this point in time, I want to separate it. And I would like, like for me personally, when I do this, I actually try to mold it out into fire logs. Like that is what we're doing here is making fire bricks, right? So if I squish it all out, square it off a little bit, give her some length, because that's what the other ones look like. And we're actually trying to make something that's comparable to the fire log that I showed you when we started. So, squish it out to where you want it, like I'm doing right here, trying to expand it, push it down, and keep it compact. So we're going to do that to both of them. And then we're going to let this dry. Now these fire logs, they're probably going to take something relevant to... Uh, a week, two weeks for it to be fully dried. It's kind of like when you put the wood in your house. You can't just throw it in the stove. You got to give it a little bit of time to go to that happy place, right? So just space them out, make your two logs, give it a couple weeks, and then these things here, you're going to throw this in the stove and it's going to burn for two hours, two and a half, three hours, and it's going to provide great heat and we didn't pay anything for that at all. So once these are dried, I'm going to come back and show it to you, and then we'll do a comparable with the one that I purchased. Okay, so I'm back. Operation Homemade Fire Log. This here essentially is going to be free heat for the rest of your life. I mean, it's a little bit of work that you got to do with some miscellaneous that comes in the mail, or some random paper, random paper scraps that you got around the house, but it essentially is going to create fire logs for you, okay? This is the store-bought. There's the dried version of what we made. Okay, it looks like one of the fire logs, it's got a little bit of weight to it like the fire logs, and these things burn really, really, really good. So, I'm going to open this up, just to show you. I mean, their fire logs are all dark and they look friggin' like peat moss. That's their fire log, okay, it's dark. This, this is our fire log. So, ours is lighter. Obviously, it's not going to be the same thing, I don't know what the hell they put in this but I know what we put in this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to throw it in the stove and I'm going to show you that this here will get the stove lit up and rearing in a good, good way. So let's do that. Okay, so I've got a little bit of coals going on the bottom of the stove. I mean, the easiest way to light this is just to throw it in there with the coals. And I got one, and we had made two. So we're going to throw the second one in, and we'll just close up the door and we'll let her get going. Just remember, it doesn't take a lot of heat, a lot of firewood to create a lot of heat. So. We'll get those two burning and we'll come back and get a shot of So it. you can see it just started to burn and already we're getting a good flame on that. Now it's about how long it's going to burn for, but uh, this is going to light right up. It's going to heat the whole basement and I literally made that out of some scrap newspaper and some junk that came in the mail. So you can see right there, that's a great fire. Like I said, it doesn't take much to heat the entire basement or if you've got your stove in the living room. This really, really does work and it'll save you a lot of money. If you make a couple of these bricks, once a week or once every whatever I mean stockpile them for the whole year it doesn't matter the point is you didn't pay a nickel for what's in there it just took a little bit of your time and a little bit of know-how and now you got a great fire that's gonna warm the whole basement up or your whole house and it's free that's the big word free heat forever it's forever as long as you keep making it it's forever and look at that that is burning great